Hey, Christina here. Welcome to my crystal art series. Today, I will be sharing the design process behind Positive Bloom. Let's go. So here's my mood board and mainly my inspiration for this piece was looking at sunrises, the color of the sunrise at dawn in the sky, the beach waves and the shapes that they make, and sunflowers. I really wanted to bring in some kind of a floral shape because sunflowers, from what I've learned, they turn towards the sun when they're opening up. So that's really interesting because that's metaphorically saying that that's how we should be as human beings, looking towards the light because that's what we need for this time during the pandemic and for us to stay positive and always see the light in the darkness and to remember that this is only temporary and we need to keep moving forward and keeping our energy high which is about staying in the energy of love gratitude everything up in the positives so the sunflower really struck me for this piece as a metaphor. I also looked at sand because looking at citrine, the stone, I saw within the stone the feeling of sand, the feeling of a beach, the feeling of, like I said, the sunflowers and the sun itself. So looking into the stone, these are the types of words that came to my mind. So sand was... An interesting one because I was looking more at sand that had a windblown effect to it because it creates shapes and almost a directional pull which was what I was trying to emphasize in this piece and then I was looking at different types of yellows that I wanted to bring into this piece and I wanted to keep the piece pretty warm I didn't want to bring in any cool colors because I really wanted to stay in the light and bright warmth tone zone. So I looked at honey colors, again the sky colors for dawn, and then some of the colors within citrine, which they had a lot of colors of orange, yellow, a little bit of browns, but a warmer brown. So I really wanted to take those characteristics and put it into a piece that really speaks to what the stone is about and also metaphorically showcasing something a little bit more deeper. Taking this piece into Procreate, I started with my layout Using the mono line brush tool, I started mapping out the shapes that I wanted to use and I started looking at shapes that were curvy, you know, had movement to it and I was trying to mimic the sunflower shape but it started looking a little bit like a meteor and that was not what I wanted so I had to change things around in terms of positioning to create a positive tone. And tying it back to mimicking the shape of the sunflower and the sand, the flower having an outline around it was something that I really wanted to bring forward. I wanted to give it a glowing aura and it floating in a positive energy because this is the metaphor that I want to compare between us humans and the sunflower. That we are the same and this is what we need to continue to do for ourselves after outlining my overall composition i started adding in the base colors which i said earlier i wanted to focus on browns oranges and yellows for a warm feel because this is all about staying within the positive energy and when I think about positive energy, I think about a lot of warm colors and keeping things very light and airy. So next I added texture to the ground using the burnt tree brush and the lasso tool 
to section out the textures to mimic blowing sand. And this is not my first time using the lasso tool, but for this art series, I wanted to give it a try. I thought to section off some areas to make things interesting and balance things out so things aren't over texturized. So the blowing sand idea, I wanted to bring in the directional feeling that I wanted to bring for this art piece. So in design, anything that's going up, pointing towards up or up to the right, it gives you the positive feelings and a positive message. So for me, I looked at the sand in a way that it was pointing up to the positive vibes. And that was something that I wanted to bring to this piece and achieve. So for the aura around the flower, I used a cotton brush for a feathery glow and also coming in with the syrup brush tool to really emphasize some light rays coming out of that flower. And it was just showcasing the connection between the sun and the flower. And I thought it was very beautiful to bring in some movement in that background and a little bit of a pattern. And it had a little bit of a spiritual feel. So next I came in with a darker yellow to bring in some dimension to the flower using the lasso tool and the cotton brush to make it feel 3D, but also bringing in some shadows to for bringing in some contrast and I thought that that was a great choice it really made the flowers stand out a little bit more and then with that heavy black outline around it I actually decided to use the levels tool and to lighten up the lines for a softer look now next I added in an accent color which was yellow again, but throughout the sand, using the reed brush tool for some interest and dimension. So bringing your eye all around the piece and just highlighting some significant areas. So I really wanted to highlight those directional waves within the sand with that yellow. But I also highlighted some areas within the leaves as well uh, of the flower. The uh, white line work that I did slightly but softly around the leaves. I also brought in some white lines within the flower itself to just highlight and contrast some areas where, you know, there's highlights that the sun is casting onto the flower, but very, very subtle. So lastly, I wanted to texturize the petals and adding in a white chalk brush to give a little bit of an ancient feel or a rustic feel because the sun has been with us for a very long time and I really wanted to bring in that history of what sunflowers and sun's connections do. It's been here for a long time and we need to remember that because us humans have been on earth for a while and we need to see that connection from history till now it's still the same. So taking my work now into Illustrator for setup. So I set up a eight and a half by 11 art document. And what I did was made two four by six inch rectangles and I put them side by side and I made sure that they were bumped together and then in the middle I drew a line as my guide where the fold mark was going to be and alongside that I made small little corner lines on each of sides of the rectangle and those were my crop marks and those crop marks would help me when in printing cut down to size so from there 
I merged my two four by six rectangles into one shape because I already had my guides to help me out. So now I did not need that anymore. I brought in my artwork and placed it in and I put it on the right side because that's the front of the card and then on the left side is the back of the card so I added all the information that I needed in the back the title the logo whatever other things that I needed on the back and then I saved it out as a PDF ready for print So now that we printed our piece on cardstock paper, now it was time to take it to my drafting table. And basically I have a score kit board which helps to make the fold line on the card. So I used my scoring utensil and I just made a slight indent on the art side up so that I can see where things need to line up. And I usually line up with that guide that I put down the center of the card on the computer to help me line things up where the fold is going to be. I flip my artwork around on the back and I make the indent all the way down the page and that was going to be my fold. So once I scored everything it was time to cut it down so I brought out my cutting board and exacto knife and I lined up my ruler with my crop marks and with my exacto knife ran it down the ruler once or twice whether if the knife is dull or not uh, now we were able to cut it down and we have it down to size perfect now I have my bone tool and the bone tool I run along the side of the card because it helps with cleaning up the fold and making it look seamless and there will be no rips or torns on that fold line and that's the whole idea of using that bone tool and scoring because it's a clean finish. So now it was time for some finishing touches. So I brought in my gold metallic paint to highlight the horizon mimicking the beach and showing the ground and sky. This was emphasizing to look beyond the horizon and that was just another thing about being positive and having a growth mindset because right now in this time that we're in everybody seems trapped and we can't feel that way always look beyond the horizon because there is hope and we need to continue to stay positive because of that and so just a little hint on why I highlighted only that one area with gold and then I added in some gold glitter for a magical glow to represent our aura and the sun and how both are bright and powerful and usually with having a strong aura you do feel a magical energy around you and that's the whole idea about being positive and staying light and airy on your feet. And here we are, all done. And I just want to thank you guys for tuning in and for letting me share the process with you. And I hope that you guys are staying safe and happy during this pandemic. We will get through this together and I hope that you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Keep smiling. Bye.